So for the third day, I had planned something a little more uh, exotic. I had planned to explore the winter walking trail at Unaswara. The Unaswara Nature Park is a large uh, nature reserve just two, two and a half kilometers away from uh, Ravanemi city center. It's part of this large complex where there's a ski center and there's a nature walking trail which people use in summer and there's also the winter walking trail which consists of uh, a ski trail and a, a, a walking trail. So the walking trail is, is a total a loop of about six kilometers and you can also go on top of the viewpoint on top of the fell uh, where there's an observation deck that you um, catch uh, the nice 360 degree view of the surrounding areas and also maybe uh, catch a sunset. So that was my aim to see if you could actually go on to the top of the hill. I got a taxi from the hotel, got myself dropped off at the car park um, of the winter walking trail and uh, started exploring the area. As soon as you go uh, enter the Unasura Winter Walking Trail, it feels like you're in a winter wonderland. I mean, it's so close to the city and it already feels like, say, you're out in the tundra or something like that. The closest thing that I can, the best way I can describe it to is something straight out of Narnia. Uh, if you've seen the movie, the children's movie, uh, Narnia. So it's exactly like that. The, the air is so pure and cold. Walking along these nature trails in um, Lapland is almost like meditative and uh, mindfulness at the same time. And as you walk and venture further into the trail, you're pretty much all by yourself and it's almost dead still. Only sounds that you hear are the, the crunching of the snow under your boots and maybe the occasional rustling in the bushes from maybe a bird or a squirrel or uh, maybe a snow falling off the branches of a tree. Just picture that. The Unswara Winter Trail near Rovaniemi. Finished Lapland. Temperatures around uh, minus 15, minus 17, something like that. Night was around minus 19, but it's beautiful as you can see. Winter Wonderland, indeed. And there's kilometers of these trails to walk and explore. And coming back to the Unasura Winter Walking Trail, so yeah, I got so excited, I started shooting left, right, and center. Then I sort of told myself to calm down and think and compose better images. Because what happens in this kind of situation where you're surrounded by so much beauty, it's easy to get carried away and start clicking away at everything in front of you. And then when you get back, you realize that you've just got hundreds of images uh, which you can't really use for anything. Because not everything that you see which looks beautiful uh, really translates into a good image or a print. You need to be mindful of that. So I slowed down and started composing and looked at for specific opportunities. So I shot with the 7200 lens. Uh, so I got some images with high compression, kind of isolated certain portions of uh, the scene and scenes in front of me along the winter walking trail. And so that uh, could highlight certain things that I wanted to highlight. So a couple of those images made it into my book. Yeah, then I also shot a few images for the 55mm uh, Zeiss Otis lens. They were okay, uh, nothing to write home about. Then I took out my 100mm uh, macro lens because I saw spotted some opportunities where they could uh, uh, take some nice detailed shots of uh, these tiny snowflakes on branches uh, on, on top of uh, pine cones and things like that and started exploring that. Uh, got a couple of images. Then I took out my wide angle lens and shot uh, these, uh, the path itself, the winter walking trail itself, because at certain points you have these branches arching over the path and that kind of look like you're heading into a rabbit hole, like an Alice in Wonderland kind of look. So I, I got a few pictures of that. Walking along the uh, Unasura winter walking trail is definitely one of the highlights of my trip. Even though I, I, I don't think I got the most number of great images from that particular walk. But I did manage to get a couple, but more than that, anything else, I think just the experience uh, of walking along that thing actually set my mood and my mind for the rest of the trip. 
after a couple of hours of exploring that, then I start, as I started venturing further along the trail, the sky started getting gray uh, and dark. And look, there was a storm uh, when it became, it looks like it was going to snow. And it did start, start snowing. And then when I looked back, I realized that the, the snow was beginning to cover my uh, the path. So which was, got me a little worried because it was started beginning to cover the path and also the signs. I could be in trouble because I might get lost and might venture off a path. And if you venture off the path, Without snowshoes, there's a very high chance that you could probably twist your foot or you could, uh, you know, also get a uh, possibility of getting lost. So I, I decided to call it quits for the day and started, uh, so I'd done about half of the trails and then decided to head back. Early start at uh, the uh, walking, uh, winter walking trail, Onaswara. If you guys have uh, come to Finland or Finnish Lapland, uh, Ravaniemi, definitely visit this, this uh, trail. It's uh, something that you need to do. It... So uh, I was shooting with my wide angle lens earlier. It's really cold now. I've been here for about two hours. Um, decided to, it's time to head out because my feet are starting to ache, my fingers are starting to ache. So I don't want to get frostbite. Or so. I'm going to now uh, walk back to the car park and uh, find a taxi or something. So I quickly walked back to the car park uh, to get a taxi. Uh, unfortunately, my phone didn't have uh, network coverage when I reached the car park, so I couldn't ha hail a taxi. And there were no cars coming by that way. And no taxis coming there is because the weather got worse with snow and obviously everybody was staying um, uh, indoors and staying warm so i decided i might as well just start walking back because we're not very far from the city center and the hotel just about two kilometers and i said okay let me start walking back but i think i walked for about half an hour and realized i hadn't gotten very far because of the conditions and I also being to stopping now and then take some images because i came across some interesting scenes on the way Finally, my feet and toes were beginning to get cold. I mean, my face was getting really cold. So I came across this gas station, luckily, uh, with a convenience store. So I, I went into the convenience store to stay warm, get warm. And then I got myself a hot chocolate and just uh, was waiting there. And then I realized uh, I could ask the uh, cashier to call me a taxi. So uh, they were kind enough to do that for me. And then the taxi came and I, could, I took a taxi back to my hotel. And so that was my um, experience uh, heading to the winter walking trail at Unaswara. So I, I decided to stay warm for the rest of the day and uh, take it easy. And I backed up my memory cards uh, to my external hard drive. Memory cards that I use are the SanDisk memory cards. And uh, I use the Extreme Pro a very, a version of the SanDisk cards. I use different uh, capacities I use. And I also use the Lexar uh, 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 Pro cards. Uh, so I use either 32 GB, 64 GB and 128 GB versions of these cards. So I, on the Canon bodies, I use CF cards as my main uh, cards and I use the SD cards as backup. Where I, I use the camera software to just back up uh, low-res low uh, JPEGs to the SD cards. And then when I head back uh, to, to my hotel at the end of the day, I just back up all the cards onto my external hard drives, which are the, which are the Lassi uh, rugged uh, series which I used to use then back then. Okay, time for a small sales pitch. I shot about 4,000 ima odd images during my trip to Lapland and I chose about the 40 best images from that trip uh, from my exhibit called minus 29 degrees Celsius which uh, happened here in Chennai in India. It was very well received and covered by the newspapers as well and now there's a chance for you guys to experience those uh, images for yourself uh, through this coffee table book that I've made called minus 29 degrees Celsius. It's a collection of my images from Lapland. Um, it's a limited edition series, uh, limited to 550 copies, of which uh, the first 50 signed copies have already been sold. So it's your chance now to pre-order from the remaining 500 copies and make one of them your own. So if you want to pick up this book, I'll add links in the description box. And it's also soon going to be available on Amazon, Flipkart, and I'll share details with you guys, both through my YouTube channel as, as, as well as my website. So stay tuned. Pick up this book, it will definitely help me uh, with uh, supporting my photography and as well as my YouTube channel.
so on my fourth day at uh, Rovaniemi, I decided to do something different. I'd been spending a lot of time uh, exploring the city on foot, so I decided to join a bus tour organized by uh, Lapland Safaris uh, to the Ranua Wildlife Reserve. This is about an hour's bus drive away from Rovaniemi. It's, uh, it's like a zoo, but the animals are not really caged up. They're in this huge uh, outdoor uh, enclosures with uh, tall walls so that they can't escape. But uh, they have a lot of space to roam around within those enclosures and they're obviously well fed. So it's more like a sanctuary for these animals. So the morning came, so I, I uh, walked up to the safari uh, operator's office at Ramanami, which was a short uh, walk away from my hotel and uh, um, checked in for the trip. And uh, they uh, actually lent me some nice warm uh, boots for for the trip. And they were also ready to um, uh, lend me some nice um, their own branded clothes for the day, uh, which I, I refused because I was pretty comfortable with my own clothes. And uh, yeah, then we all boarded the bus. It was a, it was a full tour. There were about uh, maybe 25, 30 people on that uh, tour. And uh, they all boarded the bus. And uh, in about an hour's time, we were at uh, Ranawa. And once we reached Ranawa, they just let us, uh, they gave us a couple of hours to explore the place by ourselves. And then we were all supposed to join back for uh, 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 a group lunch at uh, the restaurant there. So I headed out uh, exploring uh, the uh, reserve on my own. Yeah, and I was surprised to actually see some um, Arctic uh, wild boar as well. And these were huge. Uh, came across some aviaries in which there were uh, different varieties of uh, uh, the polar Arctic uh, owls and some birds of prey. Once I finished uh, seeing all that, I decided to spend some time just uh, capturing the different scenes along the paths uh, at the Reno Wildlife Sanctuary because I saw some interesting opportunities where the light was again coming through uh, the trees. Uh, there's a light snowfall happening and the light was kind of filtering through that uh, through the trees and uh, backlighting that snow that was falling. Uh, I tried for a few minutes to capture that but I did get a couple of good pictures but uh, I, I would have to say that I actually failed to capture that scene. Well it happens and then start exploring the pathways themselves so there's nice boardwalks that go through the uh, Renoir Wildlife uh, Reserve and uh, that made some interesting conversations as well. So uh, then the Time quickly got over and it was time to head back and join the group for lunch. And I uh, rushed back because I realized I was late. And then I rushed back, joined the group uh, for some nice, uh, I think, spaghetti and meatballs lunch and uh, just some french fries. Then we boarded the bus and we headed back to um, Ronavanimi. And once I then picked up my own shoes back to the hotel, decided to uh, take the rest of uh, the evening off and just rest because uh, and pack because next day was travel day and I was going to be heading I was going to be taking a bus to uh, Sari Selka uh, for my second half of my uh, Lapland journey. My exploration of Sari Selka and the Urho Kikonan National Park and the fells in and around Sari Selka coming up in part three of my Lapland story so do wa watch out for that video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button so till the next video take care bye bye.